Welcome to worship for Sunday, March 17th, 2024, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. We continue the sermon series on following Jesus and continue our Lenten journey together. The scripture for today is only one and it's short. Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 23 through 27. Hear God's word for you. Then Jesus said to them all, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Indeed, truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Here ends this reading. May God bless it to our understanding. There are at least six times in scripture that Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus tries and tries again to tell us how hard it is to follow in the way of love. And as we move forward through Lent, we take another look at that way of love, that way of the cross. The cross means many things to us, many different things. It is a symbol of Christianity. It is a call to faithfulness. The cross is a reminder of Jesus and of God's love for us. Uh, but in Jesus' day, there was only one reason for a cross. And that reason was death, suffering and death. The cross meant suffering and death. Uh, today, we take the phrase, take up your cross and follow, we take that as a metaphor for service. Take up your cross, take up this challenge, do your best, offer your gifts. It won't be easy, but you can do it. Take this job, take on that mission project. But that's not it completely. In the Bible, take up your cross and follow me was not a metaphor when Jesus used it. Take up your cross and follow me means suffering and death. Follow me into death, Jesus says. And, and as we now know, follow Jesus into eternal life because of that death. Be willing to die because of how much you love God. Fortunately for us, we don't, do not literally have to die. Jesus died for us so that we don't have to. But we do have to lose our life in the sense of commitment to God. We do have to give our life to God completely. We must give control of all of our life to God. We must put our lives in God's hands as, as Jesus did when he accepted the way of the cross. Jesus knew what was coming. Jesus chose to submit to the suffering, the humiliation, the death. Jesus did this because Jesus understood God's plan. Uh, Jesus understood God's love and God's purpose of saving humanity. Jesus understood that by putting the needs of others ahead of his own pain or humiliation or suffering, Jesus knew that he was fulfilling God's plan that would lead to salvation for everyone. Jesus knew that in his suffering, because of his suffering, we would be healed and saved. Jesus was humble and obedient to God. And Jesus calls us to the same. Not to death, but to life in Christ. Our question, <clears throat> our question for this season of Lent is, how are we to give our life to Jesus? 
uh, to be obedient to God's plan, to offer all that we have for God's purpose. It's all about trust. Uh, unlike Jesus, we don't know what is to come. Uh, we must trust God and follow Jesus. Uh, each moment of every day, we must decide to trust God and follow Jesus every day, to do whatever God sets before us. Uh, for Jesus, that meant laying down his life, suffering, and death on a cross. For us, that means laying down our life, our gifts, our desires, our hopes, our dreams, placing all of those at the foot of the cross, giving them to God. It means giving our lives to Jesus. It means doing what we believe God is calling us to do, showing God's love to others. It means trusting God and trusting that God will lead us where we need to go. It means trusting God that God has us in hand, that God carries us, whatever happens. Trusting that God's plan is for the good, for us and for everyone. There are a lot of challenges for us in this plan, this plan of God, not the least of which is trusting God and moving forward, be believing that God cares for us and will take care of us. The world is a scary place, we know this, and we know bad things happen to good people. That trusting God means even if those bad things happen, even when those terrible things happen, it means trusting that God loves us and, and God will care for us, that we will make it through and, and we will be okay by God's grace. In this world, as long as we live, as, as as well as in eternity with God in heaven. Trusting God is simple, but not always easy. But trusting God is life. Trusting God allows us to live and to live as whole people. Beyond this fundamental faithfulness, the hardest thing for me is knowing the right things to do. Uh, understanding the next steps along the path and, and making good choices. I do trust God. I try to listen to God, but sometimes it is hard to hear. It's hard to know what the right thing to do is. When there are two good options, how do we choose? When, or worse, <laughs> when there seem only bad options. Again, how do we choose? How do we know where Jesus is leading? I've always said when, you, when you're making a choice, trust God and, and make your best guess and just move on forward. God will lead you, lead your steps, or God will save your missteps. God will redirect if we make mistakes as long as we continue to trust God. And maybe even the mistakes are something that God can reshape and use for the good. Often, my mistakes, God has turned into blessings. Now, I know that assurance is not so great when we're trying to decide. <laughs> uh, rather, we hope that instead of using our missteps, Rather, we hope that God will guide our steps and keep us from making those mistakes in the first place. So we try to listen to God. We try to understand where God is leading. Let's go back to that scripture from today, uh, from the passage for guidance. The phrase Jesus says is, take up your cross and follow me. Not take up my cross or someone else's cross. We are not to take on the burden of Jesus. It is not our death that would serve God's purpose. It is rather our life given to God for God's purpose. God's purpose is love and letting everyone know and feel and experience and believe that love of God. 
God wants us to invite others into that presence of God and that purpose of God. We do that by loving as Jesus loved, by caring and giving and helping, healing, teaching, touching, as Jesus did, to walk where Jesus walked. Take up your cross and follow Jesus means accept your path the path that is before you. Look for your own path from God. Do what God makes you able to do as you live your life in the world. We take up that which God has given us. Whatever God sets before you in your life, take it up. We take up any way that we can show God's love in the world. Whatever presents itself, any way, wherever the Spirit leads us. The cross for us is not the way of death. Rather, it is the way of life. Uh, the cross is salvation and redemption. It is the chance to start over whenever we need it. It is the chance to renew our commitment again and again and continue when we need to find strength. The cross is more than a symbol, it is a message. The cross is a message that God loves you so much, Jesus will do anything to save you. Anything. Not only will Jesus die for us, God will send the Spirit to keep us alive, to strengthen us, to inspire us, to give us courage and wisdom. When you take up your cross, you take up that message, that message of love from God. When you take up your cross and follow Jesus, you take up the message of love and you deliver that message to the world. God loves you. How can you deliver God's message of love today? That's actually our challenge every single day to deliver God's message of love. Notice in the reading from Luke, Jesus says, take up your cross daily. Every single day, deliver God's message of love to the world. Take up your cross daily and receive the grace of God. Take up your cross daily reminds us that every single day, every single moment, we are invited to recommit our life to Christ to decide again with every step we take that we will follow Jesus. To follow means you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Sometimes for us, for some of us, who have been in church a long time or have been around faithfulness for a long time, sometimes Christianity becomes an old habit. Sometimes we take God's love for granted Take up your cross daily calls us to intentional Christianity. Yes again today, I will follow Jesus. Yes again tomorrow. As you go out in the world this week, take up your cross and follow Jesus. Every single day, find a way to share God's love. Every single day, take up your cross, lift up your cross, remember the call of the cross, receive the grace of the cross every single day, and follow Jesus into loving action. This is the gift of God's grace for all who would follow. Thanks be to God. Amen.